Do you know Japan? Sure, it's that Asian country with the geisha, ninjas, and all that anime, right? No, we're not talking about that Japan. We're talking about Japan. This unique, dark, and shiny lacquerware is called Japan in English. Ceramic is brushed with a tree resin called Urushi or Japan lacquer. It's been used everywhere from South Asia to East Asia for thousands of years. From historical daily goods to art and architecture, Japan ink is usually associated with traditional crafts. Yet at Meiji University, there is a scientist who studies the culture of this lacquer. Hi, I'm Takayuki Honda, and I study lacquer and lacquerware. Professor Honda's specialty is polymer chemistry and analysis of natural organic matter. He's a leading researcher in the field of Japan composition analysis. This lacquer is a natural paint and adhesive. When it is extracted from the tree, it's rigid, but it goes hard at a certain humidity and lower temperature. When it solidifies, the molecules join together to form larger molecules. With Japan, the molecules join up into very hard 3D structures. Compared to synthetic resin, it takes a long time to harden, but this is good for applying gold leaf. For centuries, lacquerware has been made in Japan, China, Korea, Thailand, Myanmar, and beyond. But the quality of the Japan lacquer varies by region. One of Professor Honda's projects is a scientific analysis of where those lacquers come from and how they were used. A one millimeter fragment of a heritage artifact can tell us the species and the location of the tree used for the lacquer and its age too. The tiny fragment is enclosed in resin. This is sanded down, making it easy to observe the fragment in cross-section. The data obtained is useful, not just for preserving and repairing artifacts, it also gives us clues about commerce and how people used to live. Professor Honda started researching Japan as a student. He focused on it as an eco-friendly natural material. After years of research, he developed hybrid lacquer. It is a coating without chrome, which is toxic to humans and the environment and highly anti-corrosive too. Traditionally, Urushi had the highest market share in Japan, but from the Meiji period, cheap oil paint developed overseas were imported, leading to a steep decline in the annual production of lacquer in Japan. Up to 2,000 tons of lacquer were produced every year during the Edo period. That is now down to 1.2 tons but it is a natural product with much smaller CO2 emissions than petroleum-based coatings. Professor Honda says it has enormous potential as a recyclable coating. The extraction of lacquer requires trees to grow to maturity, which allows the trees to absorb a lot of CO2. It doesn't pollute the sea because it breaks down naturally. Unlike disposable plastic products, lacquerware is tough and repairable so it can be used for generations. And just like leather goods, it changes with use, such as its luster. It becomes more attractive over time. Beyond traditional art and craft, lacquer has even been used to coat skateboards and BMX bikes recently. One theory is that Japanese lacquerware found its way to Europe in the 16th century, and art dealers called it Japan. Now, people are taking another look at its beauty. In Japanese, we say aji or shibumi. The texture of lacquerware changes as you use them. Their beauty grows and they can be used forever. With the latest scientific techniques, we can connect to our traditional culture and open up new prospects for the future. Surely, Professor Honda's research will see Japan's lacquer continue to fascinate us for years to come. I hope more people around the world to discover and love Japan.